What exactly is a tarantula? The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines the word tarantula as any of various large, typically ground-dwelling, hairy, megalomorph spiders of warm regions that possess venomous fangs used to subdue and kill prey caught by ambush or chase and that construct silk-lined burrows but do not build webs to trap food. Tarantulas are large, hairy spiders that look very intimidating and inspire fear in most people. The truth is they are virtually harmless to people and mostly docile, typically wanting to run away and hide from humans rather than show any aggression or defensive behaviors. Tarantulas actually got their name from another spider. The original tarantula is ironically not part of the tarantula family at all. The spider from which the name derives is the Lycosa tarantula, which experts now refer to as the tarantula wolf spider. The name originates from the Italian town Taranto, where the tarantula wolf spider can be found. The bite of the L. tarantula was once thought to cause a disease known as tarantism, in which the victim cried and skipped around before going into a wild dance. The hysteria was seemingly cured by frenzied dancing, which is now known as the folk dance tarantella. It has been shown, however, that the bite from this wolf spider is not dangerous to humans and that no hysteria can be attributed to it. Nevertheless, the term tarantula then applied to any unknown ground-dwelling spider, including what we now consider true tarantulas. But what is a true tarantula? And how are they different from other spiders? All tarantulas are spiders, but not all spiders are tarantulas. There are over 40,000 species of spiders, and they make up the seventh largest class of animals and are under the phylum Arthropoda, which consists of most invertebrate animals, including insects, spiders, crustaceans, and so on. They have a segmented body, an external skeleton, and jointed limbs. The class which consists of spiders is called arachnida and includes spiders, scorpions, mites, and ticks, commonly referred to as arachnids. They are invertebrates that have become adapted for terrestrial life and possess both lungs and trachea, and many have silk or venom glands. Like all arachnids, spiders have just two body regions, a cephalothorax and an abdomen. These two body regions are joined by a narrow tube at their waist called a pedicel. The abdomen is soft and unsegmented, while the cephalothorax is hard and includes the spider's set of eight legs. Most spiders have eight eyes, though some have less or none at all. And most spiders have poor vision, though there are some exceptions. For example, jumping spiders are said to have very good eyesight. Spiders are further classified under the order of Arania, and this includes every type of spider, from orb weavers to jumping spiders, from huntsman spiders to trapdoor spiders, even your common tiny house spider that is up in the corner of your room right now, all the way to the massive, hairy tarantula. To get even more specific, tarantulas are in the infraorder of Megalomorphae, which comprises mostly heavy-bodied, stout-legged spiders, including tarantulas, Australian funnel-web spiders, mouse spiders, and trapdoor spiders. This is a primitive suborder of spiders with over 3,000 species found on all continents except Antarctica. They typically have large, powerful fangs and venom designed to subdue their prey. Many of these spiders hunt other large arthropods and will sometimes even hunt 
small reptiles or mammals in the wild. But most megalomorph spiders are not harmful to humans, with a few exceptions, like the Australian funnelweb spider, for example. The most notable difference between megalomorphs and other spiders, or araneomorphs, is megalomorphs have primitive downward-facing fangs, and araneomorphs have more advanced sideways-moving fangs. Also, araneomorphs derived from the megalomorphs approximately 240 million years ago, and the major difference is the advancements in silk production and use. The megalomorphs are more primitive in their silk use than the araneomorphs, using it primarily to construct burrows, hides, and trap doors. Megalomorphs use silk in its basic form, mainly for housing construction, and a few for prey capture, like the pursewebbed spider. In contrast, the araneomorph spiders have evolved the ability to capture their prey using their webs. Finally, tarantulas in particular are defined by being members of the family Theraphosidae. Theraphosidae is actually the correct way to refer to tarantulas, as the word tarantula is not their scientific name and is essentially just a common term mistakenly applied to Theraphosidae that has stuck, even though Theraphosidae has been considered the correct name for these spiders since the late 1800s. Tarantulas are opportunistic hunters, mostly wading in or nearby their burrows for prey to cross their path. Their diet consists of other invertebrates, insects like roaches, grasshoppers, and crickets, as well as small reptiles and amphibians, and even small mammals like mice and other rodents. They are even known to be cannibalistic, eating other tarantulas, even within their own species. There have even been reports of tarantulas eating small birds, though this is unusual and highly debated and not typical behavior in the wild. Though if presented with the opportunity, a large tarantula might be able to subdue a bird and make them their prey. The term bird eater, which is typically used to refer to New World tarantulas or tarantulas from North, Central, and South America, came from early reports by explorers in the New World who claimed to have seen large hairy spiders eating small birds in the 18th century copper engraving by Maria Siblia Marion that shows a tarantula eating a hummingbird, though this behavior is rarely exhibited in nature and was either an exaggeration or happened under rare circumstances, such as the bird being sick or injured and landing in the vicinity of a tarantula's burrow, unable to move or fly away. The engraving depicts what appears to be a Goliath bird eater, or Theraphosa sturmi, which is a large terrestrial tarantula that would not naturally climb trees to capture prey. And the hummingbird is a very quick and agile species, not known to spend time walking around on the ground. So the circumstances in which a Goliath bird eater would have the opportunity and ability to capture a hummingbird is highly unlikely. Tarantulas reproduce by the male constructing a sperm web where he deposits his sperm, then extracts it from the webbing using his pedipalps. When ready to mate, he will sometimes travel great distances in search of a female. And once she is found, they will begin a mating ritual. They will drum or quiver to prove their worth to one another. When the female appears willing, the male approaches and inserts his pedipalps into her genital opening and releases his sperm. He then quickly retreats to avoid being eaten. But is not always successful in his escape. Female tarantulas usually wrap their eggs in silk, creating a protective egg sac which she usually guards deep within her burrow. In most tarantula species, the young emerge from the sac as bald and mobile post-embryo, which require a few more weeks to darken and molt into their first instar stage. Where most spiders typically only live for a year or two, tarantulas can live as long as 20 to 30 years, though males typically only live about one-third the lifespan of females. So what are the main differences between tarantulas and spiders? Both are spiders, but tarantulas are a special or specific type of spider. Tarantulas are usually larger than other spiders. Not all spiders have hairs, whereas tarantulas are always covered in setae. 
Some spiders will eat nectar, plant sap, leaf tissue, pollen, and seeds. But never a tarantula, as their prey always consists of other living animals. The number of spinnerets, or silk-producing tube-like structures, are different, as spiders have six, while tarantulas have only two or four spinnerets. Spiders exude silk to make webs to capture prey, where tarantulas use their webbing to line their burrows for support and extend the webbing outside their burrow to use much like trip lines, so they're alerted of any possible predators or prey in their vicinity. Most New World tarantulas possess urticating hairs or setae that they rub off or kick into the air in self-defense to ward off any predators. This is a behavior unique to tarantulas and not present in other spiders. Tarantulas have the primitive downward-facing fangs, where most spiders have the more advanced fangs that move sideways. Tarantulas' lifespan is much longer than other spiders, which typically means their growth rate is also much lower, taking them longer to develop from spiderlings to mature adults. When you consider their docile nature, low danger to humans, impressive size and colorations, ease of care, and long lifespan, it is not a surprise that they have become an increasingly popular pet and are being extensively bred in captivity. Many environments where tarantulas are native in the wild are quickly being destroyed by farming, logging, and urban sprawl, with some species even being classified as critically endangered. Thanks to responsible pet keepers and captive breeding efforts, many species of tarantula will avoid extinction even if their natural environment is destroyed. Furthermore, the pet hobby's adamant rejection of purchasing wild-caught tarantulas and many countries' governmental regulations making the illegal capture and export of such species of tarantula has seriously dampened the poaching and smuggling of tarantulas for the pet trade. Though this is still an issue in many parts of the world. And why it is so important to always ensure anytime you are interested in getting a pet tarantula, that it is captive bred and legally and ethically sourced. So as not to contribute to the illegal black market trade of exotic animals. <laughs>